right. Um, so with that out of the way, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Philip, who will be talking about pager systems. Now, many of you undoubtedly are on call in one way or another, but typically we take the easy way out and we use apps like PagerDuty or, you know, whatever <laughs> other delivery mechanism. But Philip's actually going to talk about these things, like actual physical pagers and yeah. the state of security in this ecosystem. <laughs> so please give a warm round of applause for Philip. Hi, thanks for having me here. Well, <laughs> it's, it's really fun to have Secure introducing me. And yeah, so um, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, Code Brown in the air. So why Code Brown? So Code Brown is a medical lingo spoken by EMS and emergency room personnel to demote um, a patient who is incontinent of feces. In simple words, someone should. <laughs> yep. So. Why pagers? It's such an old technique. So why, why, why we're talking about pagers here? Because we want to make pagers great again. No. <laughs> it's, well, actually, pagers are extensively used in the United States and uh, Canada. To be short, it's uh, North America. And it's used in Germany as well. Um, ma it's mainly integrated with like um, healthcare systems, uh, the workflow system, and we have things like uh, SMS to pager gateway and email to pager gateway that makes a systemic and systematic failure possible. And uh, in this talk, I would like to deliver like less about the protocol because I think most of you know things about the uh, SDR, and this is a uh, CCC conference, so um, I shouldn't be more technical than you guys, but uh, we, we can look more on the data. And there's legal disclaimer. So, it might be illegal in some country to sniff and store the data. For example, the United States. It's okay to listen to the radio and try to decode something, but you cannot store it. So, um, NSA had thought of a workaround. We just work on the metadata and things are all right. And the second thing is that um, in some countries, you cannot sniff and you cannot store the data, which means uh, I'm not sure what, what's the situation in Germany right now, if, it, if it's allowed to kind of sniff the radio. Maybe, maybe not. Yep. And in some countries, it's OK to listen to unencrypted data. But if you kind of decrypt uh, encoded data, that's illegal. Okay, so in doubt, consult your lawyer. So some of you might say, hum, hum, it's 2016, so who in the hell is using this kind of old technique? Well, the thing is that um, in some places, you want to avoid some interference, like in, in the hospitals in the United States, they want to avoid interferences. Um, so if you have money to buy some better equipment, I mean more modern equipment, they always come with some magnetic shield that is compatible with 3G or LTE networks, but for, yeah, but for some other equipment, it might be, uh, there might be some interference. Or um, there might be some places like plants, um, chemical plants, um, that uh, signals are just weak, you cannot use your cell phone. Or there's some special places like um, government contractors, defend, defense industry, military industry, where um, some like devices uh, without, uh, with the recording or transmission capacity is strictly prohibited. So you need some alternations. And in Germany as well, um, you have something like city roof, it's still in use and you can still buy this kind of pager. So, um, yeah, actually that's one of the pages I kind of um, listen to in, <laughs> in Germany. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand why the message is in English anyhow, and um, yeah, you can just read it. So, this is the agenda of today. I would first talk about a little bit about the protocols and then 
the, how it is used in health sectors, hospitals, how it's used in industrial sectors, and then government, and then we'll talk about the, how to spoof it. So, pagers. Mm. It's first invented in like uh, in 1950s. You just pay like 12 bucks a month, and you get a service uh, of 20 miles of coverage. That's quite neat. But the pagers isn't um, wasn't hot until 19, 1990s. But uh, it it has been there for only like 10 years, and after 10 years, everyone uses a cell phone. So. Motorola stops making new pagers in 2001. But hey, it was once a symbol of cool. <laughs> People have invented so many um, numerical expressions to say, hey, I love you, I miss you, goodbye, kisses, and go to hell. <laughs> well, it's good old time, right? So this is a POCSAC protocol. Um, it's mostly used in most countries all over the world, including Germany, and it's like a 512 or 1200 um, bit per second. And the most important thing is that the bandwidth is 9K, 9 kilohertz, so we can practically recognize this kind of signal in the waterfall that we will see later. And another, protocol, uh, another main protocol is Flex. Flex is invented by Motorola. So it's a little bit faster and a little bit more efficient in bandwidth. And uh, well, since we don't want to really build things from scratch and uh, these protocols are kind of complicated, you can always use a utilities like GNU Radio or um, RTO FM or uh, Multimon NG to decode and demodulate all these kind of signals. So we're using that as well. So these are the frequencies, um, but you don't, you don't really need to copy it. You can find it on Wikipedia. OK, so this is our setup. With only 20 bucks or 20 euros, you can buy such a DVB-T uh, USB dongle. You plug into your computer, run a new radio, and everything's done. So easy. And if you are rich enough, you can buy some fancy stuff like this, um, Hack RF1, and uh, probably with a B210 or um, Blade RF. That's cool as well, but well, the, the 20 bucks thing is good enough. And once it's all connected, you can use GQRX. So um, I would like to thank the, the authors of GQRX and GNU Radio and the all small com guys over, all over there. I have met them in room 15 here in CCC, so that's pretty cool. They have open source everything, so you can subscribe them, for, use it for free. And as, uh, this signal here, this one is Pogsag. And how do I know? Because it's you can, you can see the bandwidth. It's a uh, 9 kilohertz, and you see the two, um, two points there. So you know it's like um, FSK. It's a frequent shift king thing. So, so in doubt, check this uh, sigidwiki.com. It's pretty useful. And uh, for flex signals, uh, we just use a uh, um, this guy, this uh, Clayton Smith, has written a really cool piece of software called uh, pagerrx.python. Just run it, and it's, it kind of sniffs uh, multiple, band, uh, multiple bands at the same time. And we have kind of conducted our research for four months, from, um, from February to June, and we collected, um, collected, sorry, we, we observed <laughs> 18, 18 million uh, alphanumerical messages. Yeah. So let's look at the data. So um, how the data are used? Actually, it is integrated in most, um, most hospitals in the United States, like in nurse or um, workflow management, or between the communication um, between the doctor and the pharmacy. And sometimes you see personal messages as well. So let's just look in the data. 
Um, so it's um, every time when there's some event happened, um, someone called 911, and a message is transferred to some place. Like you can read here, um, there is a type called EMS, so it's an emergency thing. Um, someone has a chest pain at some time. Or um, you can have some advanced thing, like uh, someone um, who is a 91-year-old female, he has a, there's some AED used, so uh, she's being transferred to some place, um, being treated by Doctor Who, and uh, yeah, at some hospital, and uh, um, her date of birth is a um, MMDDYYYY, and there's some some uh, di pre-diagnosis before she arrives. So with this kind of information, they can better coordinate. Uh, with the hospital and be prepared for surgery or a proper bed for the patient. So that kind of reduces the waiting time, um, increases um, patient satisfaction. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sort of, yeah, yeah. If you see the, the medical treatments as a service, there can be a satisfaction. Okay. And uh, it improves efficiency in like administering discharge, or you can make an appointment with your doctor for uh, for a in-house service or in-house treatment, things like that. And um, we can see something like a Navicare system and CuraSpan system. We just named these two, but it's not limited to the brand. Um, for example, in Navicare, you can see like it's it's transporting on some patient whose uh, medical reference number is such and such um, from ED, from emergency department, um, to some exam room. And then he, the patient is transferred to CPC, a uh, chest pain center. Then status is what? Admitted to Doctor Who, uh, diagnosis is chest pain, things like that. So you might think, Oh, it's, it is all about personal data, my personal identifiable data. It's quite scary, but it's not limited to this kind of thing. For example, we have an uh, inquicker. Um, inquicker is, um, is a little bit more cautious. It uses uh, like abbreviations, uh, the first letters of uh, the patient's names. That's good. But then it gives you a URL, like just visit this URL. Yeah, then you can see something. But actually, they ask for an ID and a password. But you know, um, they usually use one single ID and password in a whole hospital. So you might know something that you are not authorized to know. Or like this, uh, Apisys. Um, this is uh, from this uh, red arrow, you see the thing is a MRN, medical reference number. And um, among all the data we have seen, it's about uh, like 7% from Navicare and 7% from uh, McKinsey and RRX. So you can, kind of dis you can kind of guess the marketing share uh, of all these workflow systems in the hospitals. But just be careful because the data might be biased. Some, some message can be sent like in a group call in the group call, it can be sent once to a wildcard number, or it can be sent like uh, 13 times to 13 different numbers. So if in that kind of duplicated numbers, you get the biased data. And we didn't clean that, because that's um, simply not necessary. And uh, so um, with this um, personal identifiable data, we got like email, medical terms, English names, syndromes, diagnosis, uh, medicine on uh, FDA drug list, phone numbers, especially phone numbers, because sometimes the patients want to um, have an in-house care, so they leave the number in the system. We might, uh, no, we might not see that. Yeah. And uh, we can make a uh, and inter uh, interesting statistics on uh, top medical terms that we have seen in the pages, like a flap. They're quite interested in your veins, 
or EKG, uh, they're interested in the, in the heart or sepsis x-ray, things like that. But, um, but we see other messages like um, how doctors communicate with the pharmacy and uh, they have kind of placed the order on what kind of med med uh, medical medicine should be delivered to which room. So with this kind of data, we see uh, a different picture. It's not about, uh, about your heart or your vein, your, yeah, it's more about like uh, Arbitor or um, Tylenol. So it's about a painkiller and uh, um, Burkondi, sorry, Burkodilator. And we see something. Um, these are from the United Kingdom. It's about the organ donors. So it's a donor number, which number, and the uh, donor's hospital name, donor's name, donor's name, and uh, like this, uh, this great donor is um, a female, 49 years old. It's a donation after cardiac death, and uh, the offer is to a patient who. Actually, this makes a very serious um, ethic issues, because usually we don't want to let the, the, uh, let the, the one who gets this, uh, sorry, this human organ know who, is the, who the donor is, because that might be something, um, might, might be something like you're trading a, an organ or things like that. So it can be very serious. And uh, we see something like home care. Oh, okay, this is a, the example of home, home care. So it's like, um, please call patient uh, at, uh, at home, his or her home. The phone number is like this. And for some syndrome, and he, wants to, she want, he or she wants to take a steroid, but not, a, not pre, uh, prednisolone. Or we see someone's dead. And actually, we have checked the local newspaper, and he's dead. So, and one of the most um, serious things we see is the caller ID system. The caller ID system is that um, whenever you make a phone call, it looks up in an internal phone book and shows uh, who's calling, who's calling whom, and who with a name and a number. So, if you kind of observe this kind of, this, uh, these pages for quite a long time, you can compose your own yellow pages. And that's made things worse. And we will see that in a minute. So, industrial. Uh, in, we see many industries using this uh, SMS to pager gateway, maybe because they want to uh, receive some alerts from SMS, but then they, dis they found that the SMS might not be delivered to their cell phones, so they use this kind of gateway to transfer it to the pages that might be used in the in the like plants, and uh, hey, for example, you see uh, this uh, from SMS thing. That number is a calling number, and you have the missed call from someone. That's a caller number. So here you can make a correlation between caller and callee, and you can make a phone book too. And the the example here, if we got the same number, like number one, two, three, four, five, six are exactly the same number, and the, the message is so brief, it's just call me, and you see they have some tight relationship. And Call Express have this uh, speech-to-text summary, that uh, just like a Google service, it transcribes the voice message to a text and send it to your SMS. So in this case, it's sent to the pages. So it's visible if someone is saying, is kind of listening to the radio. So, um, and we have seen the, the examples of using the email to pager gateway, like who's calling, who's calling, uh, will send email if there's some missed call. And uh, we have a web control, um, it's a building automation system from Automatic Logic, and a meta, a Metasys is a building automation system for Johnson Controls. And here we see something interesting. Um, like for web control, it's not, it's just okay, we, we're, we don't really care if your chiller is running or not.
but a formatasis is they have something called FQR. FQR is a fully qualified references, which means um, you see this is our AHU, and uh, this code um, means uh, where in what um, facility this thing is installed. So it's across the United States, you can pinpoint uh, which this uh, code is denoted to. You can find the proper place. And sometimes they have it written down in the email address. So these are all redacted, but you see some chemical manufacturers, some defense contractors, some university, some medical center. You can name them. They're all big brands. So oh, I don't want to be sued, so I masked them. Yep. OK. So and IT industry is using this kind of techniques as well. So you get a WhatsApp code, you get um, Nagios, NetBIOS name, um, SQL queries, um, PHP errors. Um, yeah, like, um, like uh, I've been doing pen testing for some time, and this kind of passive intelligence is really valuable to me. So, um, so thank you for the information. And sometimes the passcode is here. Uh, yeah, let's change the password. Um, that's, that's not a real passcode. But I made it, but uh, yeah, the, the message is real. And you have, sometimes you have the uh, two-factor authentication, and the code is here. Like your passcode is xx0923. So what uh, Outlook Web App is for. And uh, these messages are from um, McAfee Intrusion. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying against McAfee, but uh, <laughs> actually, this is a list of uh, CVE that this um, next generation intru intrusion prevention system has found. And uh, yeah, well, well, it's um. It, they're doing a good job. At least they're, they're blocking this kind of CVE. But um, what if this kind of CVE is happening in a national lab? Kind of serious. And we have things from power plants, like <laughs> no, the things is that the, the turbine that stops working is was actually in a nuclear plant. So, so th that's something serious. And what if the nuclear plants lost the AC power? It uses like um, on batteries or on generators, right? So this kind of incidents are reported incidents. So if you are a journalist, you might be interested in cross-check if they have filed this incident in a nuclear control agency, nuclear agency. So yeah, what if they haven't fired them? Um, and we have found things in chemical plants. Um, I have to say sorry that uh, I don't know anything about chemical industry, so I cannot um, extract useful information like I did in IT. Uh, but you see some stack, stack dump of some PLC. Yeah. So if you are an expert here, that might be useful to you. And uh, from the messages, we can find um, where exactly the chemical plant is. You see this river and uh, this um, Google satellite map. Yeah, I cannot uh, tell you where it is, but you can try to find it. Yep. Or, um, yeah, these are, these are just not very, and this is not meaningful to me, some drum open, drum down. Um, but uh, if you're working in, um, chemical industry, maybe um, you want to know some secret of your competitor. And it shows how their daily operation is like. And um, the last is a uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning system. It's, nah, it's OK. It's just a boiler and chiller and uh, air condition on and off. It's not very a uh, big deal. But uh, what about a uh, public sector? So public sector, that's government and his partners. So we have seen this. Um, you guys go ahead, I'm eating here. 
some name. Well, it's a personal message. It's not a big deal. If it were not from a government agency, yeah. It, well, it's, if that's just between me and my colleague, that's no big deal. But hey, I'm living just in a minute to leave me to somewhere. Um, if you think of um, Kevin Mitnick, someone who's really good at doing social engineering, and he got this kind of useful information, hey, he can do a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, so here comes, here kicks in the color ID system again. Like someone from some national organization, he got a missed call from some people, and you can do a passive recognition. Like, um, like this one, this one, Recon is, um, I should say she must be a secretary of some, some very big guy. She's saying, okay, JW Marriott is uh, only 300 bucks a night, you want to go for it. So she's sending a lot of messages out, and we can see that. And what if you want to impersonate her and send a message? Um, there's something in design of this paging system, is that you cannot authenticate who the sender is. It's, it's by design. So if you kind of impersonate this secretary and send some message to the big guy, he would believe it's you. And there's no way to make a two-way authentication like, a, like SSL or TLS. Okay. And this is a voicemail summary, the interesting thing. So actually, people are not aware that what they have said has been transcribed into a text and then sent via pages. So it's like, um, oh, he just missed your call. You want to tell me what's, get, what's up? Give me a call. Bye. And you can see more intimate messages um, if you really keen to know everything. Yeah. And this is a recon. We can know who's calling whom, who's whose mother, who's whose sister, who's whose lover or girlfriend, whose husband is, and their family phone number. So it's something, something very, very serious uh, when it goes to the government. And we can see the parcels. Well, actually, this are the tracking numbers of some parcels sent by some national um, defense contractors. We see the parcels going out from a given place, and uh, we, we don't know who they are. We don't want to know. Yeah. So what if um, you're a Russian spy? No. If you're a Russian spy, you might know many things. But uh, if you are a lame spy, this, this might help you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so it's about, uh, we have to prove we can actually send a page uh, to this kind of uh, tiny thing we bought on eBay. Yeah. So we bought two devices on eBay, and we know the cap code, uh, we know the frequency they're working on, and uh, again, thanks uh, GNU Radio guys, we use this uh, GR mix a lot, and with a really, really simple uh, diagram, we can send the pages like this. So it's, uh, hey, hack the planet. Yay. And we can think of the, the attack scenarios, like um, sending pages to pharmacy uh, to give you a wrong medicine. And when you took it, um, you got some problem. Um, we can try to move the patient between the facilities, like move in and out and in and out and in and out until you're really bored. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we can probably like uh, declare an emergency in some facility so people evacuate. And that might cause some damage, real, real damage. Yep. Or um, we can impersonate someone. We can prevent, prevent to be a contractor because uh, I didn't show you, but there's some real name, real phone number, and contract number. So with contract number, you can pretend to be many, uh, to be someone. Yeah. 
So here's our conclusion. Just stop using it. <laughs> yeah. Or if you really want to use it because you cannot avoid um, this kind of system, encrypt everything, just like you do in HTTP. You do everything in HTTPS, and that's better. And if you really have to, and you cannot encrypt everything, just don't leak personal information. You can use like uh, the first letter of the names. Just don't spell the whole name. We have actually we have seen some really good system trying to avoid everything, and uh, we see very good examples in Germany. Like German people are quite cautious about this kind of thing, and um, during these two days, at least these two days, I didn't see any real name. Yeah, and with small leaks, that doesn't do. You think that doesn't do any harm? We can make a database and make it a real harm. So you can download uh, our white papers from this um, URL, or you can just search "leaking beefs" from Google. You can get everything from us, and you can download the slides. And if if you have something to tell us, you if you want to discuss about um, how serious things could be. Just uh, find us on SJ Hilt and Melsky on Twitter. So I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have some time for questions and answers. If you would like to leave the room, that's okay, but please take some trash out with you. And if you leave <laughs> in the front, uh, please duck under the camera. So, if you have any questions, please line up at the microphones, which we have here. Um, in the meantime, are there any questions from the internet? Seems like a no. Mm -hmm. So, come on guys, don't be shy. There's a question right here. Yes. Um, yes? Is there, any, is there any commercially available encrypted paging system? Yes, there is. Oh, actually, Spokes has this uh, T5 system that you can buy. It's, um, I haven't used that, so I, I, I cannot say it's good or not, but yes, there is. Um, just to make sure I understand, I remember this page at time, um, and there the calls were receivable countrywide. Is yeah. this still so? so? Are this hospital stuff uh, send it locally within the hospital, or are they send it countrywide? Oh, okay. Um, thank you for the question, because the Actually, they wanted to limit the signal strength within these buildings, but in fact, they, they, failed to uh, they failed to do that. So um, it's like you can still get this kind of messages like um, 10 or 20 miles away from the hospital. So, yeah. All right, question in the back. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I also remember the time of, of the pages in the 90s, <laughs> and from one day to the, to the other, they were gone, and call centers were closed. It was really, really incredible. Uh, I, I reckon that this was due to SMS. We had this GSM then uh, coming up, so I, I have the impression that um, at that time um, in Europe, uh, SMS took over, and as far as I know, SMS is not that widespread in, in the US. So is there here in Europe less pager use, uh, usage or is there still a lot of, 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 of pages used here in, 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 in Europe, especially in Germany? Or? Um, that depends on the country because, you know, Europe is uh, quite complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, um, all I can tell you is that um, the hospitals are not using paging systems in Germany. But the emergency sectors, sometimes the police and the fire, fire department are still using them. So if you tune up to the right frequency, you can get something, but not like this. Yeah, so it's not so scary. And uh, someone told me that uh, in Belgium, they're still using it quite a lot, but I, I, I haven't been there, so I cannot tell you. And uh, a dis additional question would be, um, you said uh, Motorola was uh, stopping production in 2001, was that correct? Yeah. Um, but I understand that still uh, these pages are produced and, and uh, rolled out in, in new installations, is this correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, I, I, I'm not sure who made this new pages. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Now yes. is your chance. Yes, please. Again, on the uh, encryption, you spoke about uh, there are encrypted systems, but is there anything to retrofit? I mean, nobody would buy another 200 new pages uh, <laughs> encrypted ones. Um, and you said encrypt the things, but how could I encrypt if I have like a hospital with my 2,000 people and uh, I have to retrofit a solution? I'm, I'm repeating for the stream, is there any encryption system that can be retrofitted? Um, not as I know. Yeah. So the thing is, you're telling us why they are not replacing this kind of system for a safer system. Yep, nobody wants to invest on, uh, for uh, another 200 new pages with this inscription systems. But, um, well, I'm not sure if there are, there are some, some pressure from the society. Maybe they will make a change. All right, do we have any other questions? If not, we're going to close. Um, so thank you for attending. Please, when you leave, take out the trash and give another warm round of applause for Philip. Thank you.